metals lie on the left side of the periodic table. Similar to ionic bonding, bonds that form between metals form a lattice structure. Metals have a small number of valence electrons, and therefore will tend to lose these electrons to form cations. When no other element is present to receive the transfer of electrons to form an ionic bond, metals form lattices of cations with their valence electrons becoming delocalized. This sea of delocalized electrons are not permanently attached to any one metal cation, but rather each electron is free to move within the lattice. This describes metallic bonding. It is the strength of these bonds that will determine a metal's physical properties. Metals typically have the following characteristics as a result of their metallic bonds. They have excellent electrical and thermal conductivity, which is caused by the mobility of their electrons. Metals have high melting and boiling points. This is caused by their relatively high bond strength. Metals are ductile and malleable. This results from the space between each metal cation, allowing the cations to move and slide past one another without disrupting the metallic bonding. Lastly, metals have luster, which results from the ability of the delocalized electrons to interact with light. The strength of the metallic bond affects each of these properties. Strength will specifically depend on the number of valence electrons, the size of the metallic cation, and how closely the cations can pack within the lattice structure. For example, let's compare atoms of potassium and calcium. It's apparent that potassium has one valence electron, while calcium has two in its additional energy level. The valence electrons of these two atoms will delocalize, creating the potassium and calcium ions and a lattice structure. The calcium ion, Ca2+, is smaller than the potassium ion, K+. This is due to the increased effective nuclear charge experienced by the remaining electrons in calcium. This, coupled with calcium's increased number of delocalized electrons, allows us to expect calcium to demonstrate stronger metallic bonding than potassium. This is reflected in their melting points. The melting point of potassium is measured to be 63.5 degrees Celsius. In comparison, calcium's melting point is measured to be 842 degrees Celsius proving that calcium has much stronger metallic bonds. When examining the size of the metal cation alone, without a variation in its number of valence electrons, metals with fewer energy levels exhibit stronger metallic bonding, as their smaller ionic radius allows them to pack more tightly into their lattice and feel stronger attractive forces. We see this trend in the melting points of group 1 alkali metals. As we go down the group, Ionic radius increases due to the increasing number of energy levels. As a result, we find that melting point increases in the opposite direction, with smaller metals such as lithium forming the strongest metallic bonds of the group. The properties of metals, which result from metallic bonding, have always made metals incredibly useful materials throughout human history. Dating back to the Bronze Age over 5,000 years ago, people learned that the properties of metals can be improved and enhanced by mixing metallic elements to make alloys. In the Bronze Age, humans created just that, by mixing solutions of molten copper and tin. Bronze was used to create enhanced tools and weapons, as it had an increased hardness and durability, a resistance to corrosion, and was more workable for craftsmen compared to its individual components. The differences in the size of metals and an alloy allow for differences in the integration of other elements into the metallic structure. We could see examples where other elements fit in the interstitial space between the metal cations and a lattice. This happens in steel, where carbon atoms fill the interstitial space between iron cations. In contrast, when the size of two metals are similar, we see situations where metal ions take the place of, or substitute for the metal cations originally in a structure. This happens in nichrome, where cations of chromium substitute in place for nickel throughout the structure. The delocalized electrons within these alloys are still free to move, but depending on the metallic elements and their relative composition within the alloy, properties change and can be improved. Bronze, brass, steel, pewter, nichrome, sterling silver, and the varieties of gold such as white and rose are all examples of useful alloys. In summary, Metallic bonding is unique with its sea of delocalized electrons 
that allow metals to conduct electricity while also being malleable and workable. We can mix metals together to form alloys, which can enhance a metal's characteristics. It's because of these characteristics that we see metals play a vital role throughout the history of humankind, with advances in our understanding of metals corresponding with our technological and industrial leaps as a society.